Just one month is left for BITSAT 2023 exam. Do you want to make the most out of these 30 days and crack the BITSAT exam? Without any further delay, watch this full video as a BITS Pilani student will himself reveal what's required in order to crack BITSAT and will also give you some crucial last minute tips and a tried and tested exam strategy. About the exam pattern first. So the exam is of uh, 180 minutes and there are 130 questions uh, plus three minus one marking scheme. So that makes it a 390 marks paper. There is physics, chemistry, English, logical reasoning and mathematics. So yeah, I would basically first of all start with how you can uh, divide your time. So there, uh, there are 30 questions in physics, 30 in chemistry, 40 in maths, 20 in logical reasoning and 10 in English. So these guys have reduced the weightage of English a bit. Earlier, there used to be 15 questions in English or and 25 in logical reasoning actually. So I'll start off with saying first complete your English and logical reasoning as that is a, a comparatively easier part and you don't have much of a background in that so it will not be like hey, you are not getting a question and then you revisit it so i would suggest that don't leave any questions of this section for later on don't mark them for review and simultaneously after you're done attempting english and logical reasoning you can move on to chemistry because that is also more or less memory based or what you can do is you can keep the physical chemistry questions for later on you can do the organic and inorganic first and then you can come back to the physical questions. So your first 50 minutes approximately should go in solving English, logical reasoning and chemistry. Um, then you can jump either onto physics or mathematics, whichever is the stronger portion for you and a lot approximately 30 to 40 minutes, I would say in the initial attempt for your first preference subject and mark the tough questions which will take a lot of your time for later on then in the next 50 minutes complete the second subject for example if you read maths then take the first 50 minutes for maths then the next 50 minutes for physics and the remaining time you can revisit the physics and maths question and then revisit the chemistry questions if you left any and i won't suggest you to leave any english or logical reasoning question so that that sounds consistent, right? With this strategy, you will be left uh, with about 40, 30, 40 minutes for your review questions in which you can visit the physics, chemistry and maths question, which you have left for review. Um, so just a bit of a background. So in BITSAT, the uh, difficulty level would be easier than JE mains because in JE mains, you have to attempt 75 questions if I'm not wrong. And here you have to attempt 130 questions in the same duration of time. That is 180 minutes. So I would say in the initial attempt target for like one question in one or one and a half minutes. So you would be left with a decent chunk of time for your leftover questions. Um, the other part of this paper obviously is the are the 12 bonus questions which people put a lot of focus upon, but I would say you should not focus upon those very much because you have to finish attempting all your questions. And then if you don't have any questions left, uh, then only you can attempt that section. So it makes no sense to just blindly guess the questions because you have a plus three minus one markings. Whereas in JE mains, you have plus four minus one. So the ratio is one by three here. So even if I were to randomly attempt all the questions, uh, I would get zero marks because there is only one correct answer out of four. So that gives you an exact uh, one is to one ratio of negative and positives if you compare the options. I would say put more focus on the topics which are only in JE mains and not in JE advanced, which are NCRT focused topics. And I would suggest you uh, that instead of uh, going through your class notes or going through your handmade notes, make some formula sheets or cheat sheets or something like that. So you can 
quickly go through the formulas because the questions are not that tough so you don't need an in depth knowledge of the topic you only need to uh, uh, use the formulas apply them quickly and just you know get done with it so for preparing english i would say just don't prepare english um, because it's basic understanding which you have from your school or from your 10th standard and before that uh, moreover i would say do at least 10 mock tests if you are aiming for a good score so you are solving like 130 questions in every mock test and uh, 10 mock tests that makes it 1300 questions right so 1300 questions is, is a good amount of questions to actually practice in an exam setting in about um, 30 days so that would just like set you apart from the crowd and that would be good for you previous year questions first of all they help you in time management because when i'm just going through a book and solving questions of my own i am not time bound there and i don't have an exam setting in that aspect so i think every week you should do at least two mock tests um and if you are comfortable with it and if you have that environment at home try to do it in exam timings only for example if your exam is from 2 pm to 5 pm right so then you should do the mock question papers also during uh, 2 pm to 5 pm time slot coming on to while you're at, when you're actually in the examination hall right so what i generally used to do was whatever questions i'm marking for review i used to make a box around them so that when i revisit the questions later i can quickly go through my notebook or my rough papers and i can see the questions which are in the box so that i don't have to do all the working back again and usually i would suggest don't mark any questions for english and logical reasoning don't revisit these sections and try to not mark any questions in organic and in organic chemistry also just mark the very lengthy calculation questions in math maths and physics revisit them later on and some physical chemistry questions so that's how i think you will be done with the paper and this is a good strategy to follow